Good morning. Happy Apple Fest Sunday. Our prelude is called He is Holy by Chris Tomlin. Good morning. Good morning. All right. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in this day. I am Pastor Carl, and no matter whom you are on life's journey, we thank you so much for being here with us this day. We pray that your hearts will be open to hear all that God will have for you to hear. We pray that you will continually seek our God because our God loves you so much. So we're so thankful that you're here with us this day. I want to give a special word of a shout out to all the folks that are helping with this Apple Festival, as you can see outside, um, there's so much going on, and so many people have dedicated so much of their time and effort and resources and energy to pull this thing off and keep it going forward. So I am so grateful for all those persons that are, in fact, working with everyone. And I can tell you from experience, from what I'm hearing from people, that um, there it's a labor of love for a lot of people because they're literally bone-dead tired and are still pushing through. So I have nothing but respect and admiration for all those persons. And I just want to encourage everyone to come out and enjoy the events and everything that's going on here and continue to let our church stand out in this community as a beacon of hope and basically a place where they can come and be refreshed as well. So again, thank you. Thank everyone for your participation and your help and continue to do those things knowing that what we do for Christ is the only thing that's going to last. So we're so thankful. All right. Also, um, <clears throat> I got lost my track. <laughs> I got off track for a second. Okay, well, I'm going to turn this over to our music director so we can keep this ro rolling. Thank you, guys. Okay, please turn to your hymnals, page 71. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. <laughs> Praise Him for He is God. 
This is a time for our joys and concerns and um, what we normally will ask if there are if there are any joys and concerns that you will let me have them in advance that way I can kind of give them out right now and so on and so forth. Well, I guess everyone is busy working, so no one has any joys or concerns. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm certain there are joys and there are sorts of concerns. And come on up. <laughs> hey, everybody. Judy Iverson. On behalf of the Pebbles, I just want to add to what Pastor Carl said about the Apple Fest and all those who work so hard. And many people in the congregation, in addition to our small Pebbles group, donated baked goods for the sale. And it's, it was wonderful to see all the donations. And we're going to be able to give a nice contribution to the Steeple Fund. So thank you all very much for everybody who donated. Again, there is so much happening. There's so many things going on here that I don't um, communicate all the things, but please know that the church is moving forward and we're doing the things that God would have us to do. And all of you are central to the success of all things that we're doing, so let's keep that in mind, please. So, of uh, joys and concerns this day, that I want to give a word of joy that we are doing what we're doing in light of the issues that are going on around us in this world with this virus and things of that sort. We are using every precaution that we can use in order to be safe in all that we're doing here. And even with our time of fellowship right now, we're still masked up and so on and so forth. So we're doing our part. And I guess what I'm trying to convey to us that we need not fear life in order to live. Okay, I want to make sure that we understand that we need not fear life in order to live, but we need to be wise in all the things that we do so we can continue to have life and life abundantly. So just please be mindful of that, that we're not being foolish or frivolous, but we are in fact looking to engage life safely so we can live life and we can live it with fullness, okay? Um, in terms of joys and concerns, I want to let everyone know that I'm going to pause right now to have a moment of personal and private reflection, and then I will say a corporate prayer for us all. Our God, we praise you this day and we thank you. I'm mindful of the song that the children sing that the Lord has the whole world in his hands. So our God, because you do have the world in your hands, we know that you are able to keep us, you're able to preserve us, you're able to sustain us. So our God, as we go forth to live our lives, let us live our lives, Lord, reflective of the love that you've shown us through our great King Jesus. Our God, we cast all of our cares upon Christ as you've commanded us to do. We ask this day, Lord, you will continue to sustain us in everything that we may go through, challenges and problems or whatever we perceive issues as being, Lord. Let us trust you knowing you have the ability to help us to do all things but fail. So our God, we bless you. We thank you, Lord. I pray your blessings to be upon your people this day, and we give you the honor and the glory, and we pray even as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, be in thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good, good. Are we ready to um, um, continue this Apple Festival here? Yeah. It's been going fantastic. Um, I came last night and um, helped uh, put some stuff away. And uh, just so impressed with the volunteers that are out there um, uh, doing the work uh, year after year, year after year. This is a, a beacon in the community. And we, 
um, are a light that's shining. People look to this church. Um, as much as we talk about that steeple, people look, listen to hear that steeple. They time, set their clocks by it. So uh, it's in the center of town. It is the center of, uh, of West Haven. So we have to be proud of that and be happy that um, this is us. Uh, I always get up in, um, when, during the offering time and um, just basically uh, thank everybody, let them know that we appreciate all of us, all the members, uh, appreciate all the donations and everything that, that people give. Uh, we know that they're giving from their heart because God loves a cheerful giver, right? All right. Um, so we just ask anyone who's new, I mean, we ask for pledges, uh, people to pledge with us uh, to help uh, this growing ministry here uh, and to, uh, so that we can reach the people. Okay, we're here to reach those that uh, God doesn't want to, he's not looking for the perfect people because they're already in it. He's looking for those that are lost. So, uh, you know, I was included in that number there. Uh, I'll mention this, this month is uh, the animal shelter. Um, the donations are given in memory of Garrett Beckwith, uh, who served on the missions committee uh, for many years. Uh, she loves cats, loved cats. And... Um, um, the shelters were closed during the, uh, to make appointments during COVID, but the staff was still there and they need donations uh, just like uh, everything else. So hopefully you can find it in your heart, those brown envelopes in the back of the church there. Uh, you could put whatever your donations in there. It goes directly to the animal shelter. Uh, the scripture I'd like to go with today is um, Hebrews, the 13th chapter and the 16th verse. I like to give a scripture because it's the basis of what we do and it's the backbone of uh, why we're here. As the pastor said earlier, only what we do for Christ will last. Only what we do for him will be counted in the end. All right, so that's the important part. Hebrews, the 13th chapter and the 16th verse. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Uh, even the time that you put out here, um, the, the hours upon hours that people put, put out for their, during their day, they can be doing a lot of other things. Uh, but those sacrifices don't go unnoticed. So uh, let's keep that in mind. And the sacrifices we make, uh, it's just the time that we're giving of ourselves to give to God. We're, it's spiritual. It's a spiritual part also it's a different ministry but it is spiritual too so let's keep that in mind and let's have a great afternoon thanks he's doing me with our second song it's an insert in your bulletin it's called my life is in you lord
Good morning. I'll be reading uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 1 through 8 through 18, and then chapter 2, 1 through 2. And it's on your uh, Pew Bible, page 211 and 212, New Testament reading. <clears throat> Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord, or of me, his prisoner, but join me with suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. But it has now been revealed through the pairing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel. For the gospel, I appointed a herald, herald, and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I put my trust, and I'm sure that he is able to guard until the day when I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love of Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. You are aware of all who are in Asia have turned away from me, including Philgelis and Hermogenes. May the Lord grant mercy to the house of one Nasiphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. When he arrived in Rome, he eagerly searched for me and found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. And you know very well how much service he, he rendered in Ephesus. You then, my child, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me through many witnesses and trust to faithful people who will be able to teach others as well. Bless this readings of the word. Amen. Our God, we thank you for the hearing of your word, that your word will fall upon the good ground, the good soil of our hearts. Therein, allow your word to grow within us 30, 60, and 100 fold. These things we ask in the name of King Yahshua Jesus. Amen. The sermon titled this day is The Mission of Multiplying the Message. 2 Timothy 1, 2 Timothy 1 and 8 through 2 and 2. I know that's kind of difficult. We're going into one chapter and going to another chapter, but that's what I wanted to tell everybody. Okay. When you multiply the message, you multiply the ministry. When you multiply the ministry, you multiply the master. When you multiply the master, then many will be turned from the penalty of sin which separates humanity from our loving God, and many will be saved. Most church leaders will conclude and concede that people are our greatest resources which raises the question, why don't we devote more time to train new leaders? See, the sad part of this is that many times people don't want to be leaders. Some are dissuaded from even attempting to lead or to do anything because of their personal feelings, because others they feel may be judging them, or they feel that they don't have what it takes in order to lead. If you are persons that feel that way this day, I want to encourage you from the word of God to let you know that the Bible says you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Philippians 4 and 13. I'm starting over. <laughs> when you multiply the message, you multiply the ministry. When you multiply the ministry, you multiply the master. When you multiply the master, you multiply the fact that many will be turned from darkness into light. 
most church leaders will conclude and concede the fact that people are our greatest resources. But I want you to know that leaders don't lead because oftentimes we've not been taught to lead. We're afraid to lead. We are concerned about how people may view us as we are told to lead. But I want to encourage everyone that the Bible says that we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Sometimes the lack of development occurs because of weak leadership. And unfortunately, some leaders don't know how to lead. But effective leadership is only part of the solution. The other part is that we, what are we attempting to ask people to multiply as leaders? For example, our denomination, the United Church of Christ, is a very social justice focused denomination. And I'm thankful that we place a premium upon social justice. However, and this is where deception comes in, is that when the church primary mission is only focused on social justice, we get caught up in doing things in terms of social justice. Please have a seat anywhere. It's not a problem. You're fine. We place more focus on social justice than less acts on focusing on us being as Jesus would have us to be. And to make matters worse, when our commitment of being like Jesus is diminished, we fall or some fall into the default that, hey, we should just love everyone. But see, loving someone is just a code word that we use to deflect the argument of why we are not following Christ as we are told to follow Christ. We take ease in this to ease our conscience for not living faithfully to our commitment for Jesus Christ. And this is what we should not do, for the word of God tells us, now, by this we may know we know him, if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar. And in such person, the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word truly is the person filled with the love of God is reflected in them. By this we may know we are in him. Whoever says, I am by to him, ought to walk even as he walked. 1 John 2, 3, and 6. See, obeying Christ and following his commandments is how love is perfected in us. But it's not just in simply of the fact of loving. You see, though love is the greatest commandment that Christ gave us, there are other commandments that Christ gave us as well. And we are supposed to be imitating Christ in all that we do. Hence the fact that love, though central, is not the only thing that we should be doing. So when Jesus asked the disciples this question, who do people say I am? And we read this, and Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. See, what happened is that Peter understood who Christ was, not by his intellect, but by the revelation that God gave him from heaven. See, you don't come to Jesus Christ by figuring Jesus out. You come to Christ by faith, and it is the truth of faith that sets us free. See, we're able to preach the truth, we're able to teach the truth, and we're able to reach others with the truth, but only God can reveal truth. Only God can open the eyes of the spiritually blind. Only God can open the ears of the spiritually deaf. Only God can give life to those that are spiritually dead. And this is why Jesus says that no one can come to him unless they're drawn by the Father who sent him, John 6 and 44. Likewise, if I'm attempting to teach you spiritual things, I am only the messenger. It is the Spirit of God that confirms his message in your spirit. See, my job, your job, is to speak the truth of God and allow God to use you to speak 
the truth to others. My job is to encourage you, every one of you, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in doing so, you are a vehicle that God uses to touch the lives of other people. But it's the Holy Spirit that does the work of drawing people to God. So you and I are to let God use us just as we are. You don't have to be a special person in order to speak the truth and love to people and for people to respond to it. The Holy Spirit will do the rest if we would just share the word of God. So the Apostle Paul, for what we're talking about today, has laid out what children of God must do in order to fulfill the mission of multiplying the message. And we read this. In this context, Paul is saying that if you will accept the truth that he has conveyed, which has been entrusted to you, you are to teach people about Jesus Christ. That's what 2 Timothy 2 and 2 is telling us. Basically, believe it, receive it, preach it, and the Holy Spirit will do the rest. And that's what I'm trying to encourage all of us to do. See, God has entrusted the message of the gospel to us, and we share our message of the gospel in faith. So what I am doing right now, I'm conveying the gospel to people in faith. And by faith, I believe that every one of you that are listening to me are faithful men and women and boys and girls, and you will hold on to the faith, and you will give it away as well. Dr. Vance Havener once said, God is looking today for a person of God who will be quiet enough to get a message from him, brave enough to preach it, and honest enough to live it. Now, I'll admit, with all of the ridiculous things that have been said today by supposedly followers of Jesus Christ, that people really aren't listening as much to Christians as they used to. However, People are watching what Christians do. And I will tell you, they're not watching us with a telescope. They're looking at us with a microscope. They are asking, they are demanding, they are saying, will the real followers of Jesus Christ please stand up? And many of them are saying what Gandhi famously said. I will be a Christian if it were not for Christians. <laughs> this is why the text of Timothy 2 and 2 is important to us. Because we receive the word of God from faithful men and women throughout our lives and throughout history. And it was entrusted to us as faithful men and women and boys and girls. And we are to able to be able to teach and share the gospel with other individuals as well. See, the faithful heard, they were transformed, and they stayed faithful to what they heard, and they taught others to live faithfully as well. That's what we're all called to do. I have been gifted as a pastor of this church, but I'm commanded by scripture to equip all of you as saints for the work of ministry and to build up the body of Christ. Write down Ephesians 4 and 12 for those that may be taking notes. That's what they're telling us here. So I know and I'm fully persuaded because I'm commanded to do the things that I am doing here. And I know that if I respond faithfully and preach the word of God faithfully, that those that are hearing me will also respond in kind. I know that if I want people to serve on a team, that I must be first willing to serve as well. If I want people to care, you should see my example of me caring for you. If I want you to work and love the work that you're doing, I must show you through my actions that I love the work that I am in fact doing. If I want you to share the faith, then I must show you that I am willing to share the faith. If I want you to do your very best, then I must show you that I'm willing to give you my very best. This is the example of what we all must do, that our lives can be counted to do the things that God will have for us to do. This way, 
if I'm following what the Apostle Paul has given to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and 2, that I am sharing with you faithfully that which has been entrusted to me and has been given to you as faithful men and women and boys and girls, and for you to take the same message and give it out. Speak in your own language. Speak as only you can uniquely convey what you can convey. But do so knowing that it's not the fact of what you are saying that's going to help people to come to Christ, but it's the Holy Spirit that will hook on to what you're saying that will draw people to Jesus as I communicated to you already in this sermon here. Faithfully convey the message. The Apostle Paul asks us to imitate him as he imitates Christ. I'm asking all of you to imitate me as I imitate Christ. In other words, if I'm doing something that is Christ-like, then do it with me. If I'm doing something that's not Christ-like, then don't do that. If I am being faithful in what God has asked me to do, then look at my example of faithfulness and follow me as I follow Christ. For those that are taking notes, 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. Christ says that if you want to be the greatest servant you can be that if you will humble yourself and do what God will have for you to do. Basically, you will be exalted if you will serve faithfully. Matthew 23, 11, and 12. And this is what I attempt to do faithfully and what I'm asking you all to do faithfully. To follow Christ. To proclaim Christ uniquely as you can convey Christ. Not as I do, but as you are able to convey Christ. It's time that we boldly and confidently share our message of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is the mission of multiplying the message. Speak as you've seen faithful men and women throughout history do and let God be glorified through all that you convey. Amen. 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 Please turn your hymnals to number 447, Because He Lives. Life is
I want to thank all the visitors and guests that are that have come into this church this day. Some have come in and left, but nonetheless, I appreciate. You. Thank you for coming. People that are coming and have come today. Thank you all. Um, <clears throat> As we leave this place but not God's presence, let us walk in the spirit of love and unity. Let us continually have our hearts and minds set to do those things which are pleasing to our God, that we can walk in peace, that we can love in peace, that we can know that the words that we speak through our words of, and through our actions will be reflective of the love of our God, that we will draw all men unto Christ. So our God, I bless your people this day. Continue, Lord, to be with them. Continue to encourage them and let them, Lord, know that you love them so much. And we bless you, our God, and we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.